How are you today? I'm fine. Have you been hearing? I hope you heard some of the discussion we've been having. I have. Uh, I've, I've listened for the last 10 or 15 minutes, so I've caught up. And uh, I want to thank Lissa for her report earlier this week in my coverage. I paired it with Kevin Gostola's update on Chelsea Manning's uh, incarceration in solitary confinement. And we're, we're at a critical stage here. And if I may, I'd, I'd like to inject some criticism of the corporate media. Because oh, no, that's not allowed, not allowed here. <laughs> Instant redaction. Despite the massive fail that is now clearly in evidence on Russiagate, uh, Dean Baquet, uh, the executive editor of the New York Times, uh, says he's proud of their coverage and uh, doesn't have anything to apologize for. And Jeff Zucker is busy counting the revenues at CNN and uh, doesn't have any time for any examination of their role in promoting this massive fraud. And the ripple effect, you know, I, I, I did a podcast, I'm just about to post it with Peter Van Buren, who's been on the vigil with you before. And uh, we had a good, good hour long chat about this today. And for me, the hypocrisy of the corporate media specifically related to WikiLeaks where they were willing to publish material when they thought it would sell papers or glue eyeballs to a screen. But now that Julian and WikiLeaks have been demonized in this phony Russiagate narrative, and we blow past all of the important revelations that came from WikiLeaks that were exploited by this corporate media in their effort to get Trump, and now they are, <clears throat> pardon me, unapologetic. Uh, MSNBC ha has barely recognized, uh, you know, the outlines of the Mueller report. They're busy saying, wow, 300 pages. There's got to be some really good shit in there. Uh, and they continue to mislead their viewers. And while those of us who are skeptical may have a moment of um, vindication, or validation, we're paying a price for it because the effort to clean up the fake news, much of which was promoted and profited on by these same corporate media outlets, <clears throat> that is all occurring at our expense. I'm not the only one who has lost traffic and no longer shows up in search, uh, you know, search results. And I post a podcast on Facebook and 13 people out of my thousands of so-called friends are permitted to see it. And so yeah. this is all part of, of a, a very big package. And we need to be relentless in pushing for you know, a just outcome for Julian Assange, in rejecting the characterizations that WikiLeaks is some extension of the Russian GRU. And we're caught in the crosswinds as Trump is attempting to capitalize on Bill Barr's uh, spin and filtering. And, and I accept the you know, general uh, notions of what Barr has, has passed along here. But we now have this period of time where Trump uncontested can promote this false notion that he was exonerated. And he's a corrupt motherfucker. And that corruption is very clear. He is impeachable, but the Democrats won't touch that because they don't think it will help them in 2020. And so we're, we're reaching a real crisis level here. And I believe fundamentally that justice for Julian Assange is a significant piece of trying to recapture some free speech rights and the momentum that independent media had before this whole scandal was dropped on us. So George, um, give us your thoughts about the end of Russia, or the collusion, conspiracy oh. theory, and how it impacts this story. Well, I think the, um, 
the irony is that um, uh, a tr triumphant Trump is um, even more likely to go after uh, Julian Assange. Um, uh, he sees this as a uh, vindication, uh, and he really doesn't care one, you know, one bit for uh, Julian Assange. And I think that this is part of the Trump administration's crackdown uh, on the, um, the media. And I think they're absolutely determined to go after him and to uh, <clears throat> distinguish themselves from the Obama administration. And so, yes, we're going to do what Obama dared not do. Uh, we're going to uh, bring down Julian Assange. So I, I think um, in some ways, I think it's actually um, makes things even worse for uh, Julian Assange because I think it's just um, just uh, reinvigorates um, the Trump administration's uh, war against um, independent media. Uh, and I think. Could I, I ask you a question? May I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it, see, um, uh, vindicating Julian Assange as a way to destroy the Democrats. Um, well, I mean, I think that the, 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 the problem there is that the people around Trump, that Trump, you know, Pompeo, Bolton, they, they have hated Julian Assange from the beginning. I mean, they, you know, this, this, when, when he first emerged on the scene, they have absolutely hated him. You know, they see him as uh, undermining America, destroying uh, the American institutions, uh, revealing things and, you know, uh, you, know, you, know uh, you know, destroying everything that America is about. The Democrats really only joined uh, this uh, bandwagon a little later. First, when they they saw WikiLeaks as being uh, vaguely against Obama, but in particular after 2016. So there's really a, a kind of a, a happy consensus going from right to left of a total unremitting hostility towards uh, WikiLeaks. So it's it's true that. Um, during 2016, uh, Trump was kind of exuberantly saying, I love WikiLeaks, but he really didn't mean very much by it. He was just delighted that uh, there was stuff appearing on WikiLeaks that was um, uh, damaging to uh, the Democrats or Hillary Clinton. But, you know, that, that was about it. I mean, he, he didn't really think very much about it. Uh, and then, you know, once, once he was president, uh, he was obviously took the whole intelligence uh, view of the world, which is WikiLeaks is really terrible because it's publishing secrets that are undermining what America is all about, uh, weakening us, weakening the military and so on. So that's that's Trump's view. Trump's view is now pretty much the view of Bolton and Pompeo. You know, it's funny you say that, uh, George, because what WikiLeaks is all about is actually bolstering what America is all about, if America is supposed to be about democracy and freedom. What it is is an existential threat, not to the U.S., but to those guys personally, to their power, to their interests, all the people in the intelligence agencies, people like Pompeo and uh, et cetera. And you're right to say I think that Trump doesn't care. I think he's checked out on this. I wouldn't say he's the ringleader at all on the Assange thing. He doesn't give a damn, and he's allowing no. – his and his intelligence people and Pompeo to run the show on this, and he'll turn the other way. Very good point. He kind of the way he treats his contractors. You know, uh, he's probably nice to them while they're doing the work, and then when they stop, he doesn't pay them. So in this case, okay. oh, he thanked Assange for those uh, emails, and now that he doesn't need him anymore, doesn't give a damn, yeah. right? Right, exactly. Now I just uh, you know you know toss him over to you know Pompeo and uh, and all the rest. Yeah, do with him whatever you want. You know, I I don't care. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 terrible. But Trump has never—he has never pretended to be a friend of the media. I mean, he's never—he's never been a First Amendment person. He's never—that—that's just not not what he's about. Well, he's actually been very skillful manipulator of the media in New York yeah. City, where I grew up. He was on the front pages of the tabloids every day. He understands reporters at least that level of reporting about his personal life, about his business, because he was always portrayed as this genius, as this wonderful guy. He got on all these TV shows in the seventies and. 80s and they always asked him by the way are you going to run for president yeah. and he would say no i don't really think so but if i do i'm going to win and the yeah. son of a bitch won so, yeah. I mean, but he knows how to manipulate but he he came up against something much bigger than the new york tabloid press when he came to washington 
Uh, and uh, because he's not dealing with just reporters, he's dealing with the intelligence officials standing behind the reporters, whispering to them what to write, what to say, how to view him. Uh, and that's what he's really up against was uh, the intelligence. But, you know, and that's the thing. He, he, he should be a person who is critical of the intelligence agency to the point where he would not buy their story necessarily on WikiLeaks, but you're right. He uh, also portrays himself as being a defender of the American way and the values and all that crap, which is their own skins that they're trying to save here. They conflate right. the two, don't they? National right. interests. It's not about na the national interests. It's about their right. interests. It's about national course, security. Yeah. It's about their right. own security. Of course, of course. Because the information that uh, WikiLeaks publishes uh, undermines their position. They're saying, you know, the, everything that you've been telling right. us is a pack of lies. You know, you've got us into one war after another, one disastrous intervention after another, based on a pack of lies. And that's, that's what they don't like. It's nothing, you know, it's not national security, any sort of uh, seek government secrets that, that, you know, endangering sources and methods. No, what's in, being endangered is the reputation of people like John Bolton. I mean, I, of course, Bolton hates uh, WikiLeaks. I mean, this is an absolute walking disaster. I mean, every disastrous policy that U.S. has been involved in over the last 20 years, or in fact, it's probably longer, going all the way back into the Iran-Contra days, everything, you know, always John Bolton is there. And yet there he is. He's still at the top of the U.S. government. Uh, of course, he doesn't want WikiLeaks to be publishing material uh, about uh, go, going back to the Reagan years and, and so on. Uh, yeah, it, it stands to reason. I mean, it, it's his own self-interest. Well, they won't uh, be yeah, able to go to won't be able to go to war in Venezuela if somebody like WikiLeaks keeps revealing how they're always lying to get us into wars because they're lying about exactly. this one. Even the New yes. York Times revealed one of their lies about the burning of that aid truck. So That's they have exactly. to stop. It fits into what Lisa was saying before that the people will continue to believe these lies over and over again, even with mm -hmm. the existence of WikiLeaks. But they can't yes. take that chance. They got to stop uh, the possibility I mean, that people may wake up. Because of WikiLeaks. Yes, that's exactly right. We can go to WikiLeaks website right now, type in Venezuela, and we will go have a list of document after document of US intervention since uh, 1998 attempting to overthrow first Chavez and then uh, and well, later on into Maduro. All of that is in WikiLeaks. All of those documents, everything that the U.S. government was doing in Caracas, all their uh, dealings with the uh, Venezuelan military, their involvement in the coup and everything, it's all there. All those documents are there. I mean, it, nobody does it. You know, the, the media don't bother to do it. But, but it's all there just a few clicks away right now. And you get the, the entire sordid history of U.S. attempts to overthrow uh, the, the government in uh, Caracas. Uh, and then, you know, going back, you know, this is... Going back several administrations, Trump is just continuing with all of that. Well, um, including the the documents, I believe that was uh, from the CIA that WikiLeaks had published that showed the politically motivated uh, use of blackouts, electrical blackouts that, that we've just exactly. seen happen. Exactly. So, sorry to interrupt. Please yeah, continue. No, no, that, that's, that's exactly right. No, that that, that it, that's all. All of that is there, um, and so we're asked to believe that all of a sudden, lo and behold, blackouts. Everything is suddenly going wrong. What a strange coincidence. <laughs> Elliot Abrams appears on the scene, and right away there are blackouts <laughs> and, and, and all, all manner of other disasters. So, yeah, Marco Rubio was tweeting about it like five seconds after it happened. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, of, of course they, they don't want any of this information out. Uh, you know, the, you know, so we can actually check up all, all the, that whole um, dismal history of um, U.S. Uh, interventions, uh, you know, in Venezuela, but also, uh, you know, in, in other places in Latin America. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, WikiLeaks is, is not endangering any national security. It's just endangering the uh, career paths of the, some various um, people at the, the top levels of the U.S. government. Precisely. That's why they want to get them. Yeah. They're motivated by personal uh, revenge, hatred, and they want to stop them. Stop WikiLeaks. Yeah. They can well, continue that, to 
do what they want. And that brings me back to, to again, to Lisa's article, um, I believe was the first part where, you know, we, we've had statements from Rafael Correa, the previous president of Ecuador, saying that he feels that tr the current treatment of Assange is torture. But what you wrote about, Lisa, included uh, the description of CIA torture. And, and it's really horrifying to think that that level of torture is the type of thing that we might see happen to Julian. And I don't know if you mm. want to speak a little bit about that. Um, yeah, well, I certainly hope not. Um, but it does speak to kind of the the lengths to which you know intelligence agencies are willing to go psychologically to get what they want and you know to break people and to um yeah to, which is i mean they're doing all they can at the moment with julian assange you know in a different country in the ecuadorian embassy and it's uh yeah it's not it's not pleasant thinking about 